in screwed news, the cost of child care in America is soaring. According to a report by Child Care Aware of America, between 2012 and 2013, the cost of child care increased by up to eight times the rate of increases in family income. And the report found that many American families spend over 10 percent of their total income on child care. Fortunately, President Obama is trying to do something about the rising cost of child care in America. In a State of the Union address last month, the president called for a universal child care program. And don't forget that shortly after the 2012 election, the president called for a universal pre-kindergarten plan where the federal government would provide matching funds for states that set up pre-K programs. By pushing for a variety of new programs and legislation, the president is basically trying to make universal child care an affordable reality in the United States. But the president also understands that investments in early childhood care and education come with some pretty big returns that can help improve our economy and society. So will Republicans go along with these critical investments? Or will they continue to play politics over what really matters to the American people? Let's ask Lori Sanders, Outreach Manager and Policy Analyst with the R Street Institute. Lori, welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. Good to have you. The R Street Institute Conservative Think Tank? Yes, sir. Ah, cool. Um, so the cost of child care, I mean, the, the President, Kevin, our director, was just reminding me, the President actually brought his own child care staff with him to the White House, his mother-in-law. Um, not everybody has that luxury, yes. you know, or a house provided. I wish by the I had that luxury here yeah. in DC. That would be there, nice. There you go. So, what do we do? I mean, we, we know that when children have access, to, uh, particularly poor children, when they have access to uh, pre kindergarten care, that their outcomes are much better. They're more likely to graduate high school, they're less likely to end up in the criminal justice system, you know, all these things. Um, they're more likely to pay taxes throughout their life rather than cost us 50 grand a year sitting in jail. Why would we not want to do this? So I think the breakdown mostly comes in how the services themselves are actually provided. Um, this is something that has a lot of bipartisan support, the idea of doing something to help with you know, early childhood education and child care for those struggling to pay for it. The big, I think the bigger dividing line comes when you talk about things like universal pre-K, which are a bit more contentious because you know Head Start hasn't really exactly been a raging success, and you don't want to just make sure that you're providing these kids with with a babysitter during the day. You I want to make Head sure Start that you're was, giving them access successful. to opportunity. I mean, Head Start hasn't had any results that have carried through through 12th grade into college, anything like that. Most of the results tend to fade out after you know first grade, which isn't really what we should expect Are from a program like that. Sure? Yes, I am sure that even the gold-plated you know, study funded by the federal government said that most results tend to fade out by first grade, and in fact, some of them performed worse in, in math and things like that. So what is Head Start? You know, I'm surprised by that. I, I, I was a Head Start teacher years ago, many, many years sure, ago. My mom is an and early childhood teacher. She teaches special needs preschool. It's yeah. a very and important I'm, I'm, service. I don't mean to denigrate it, but we should provide it differently. In fact, uh, I'm on the board of a private school. Today we had our board meeting. I've been on that board. Uh, my wife and I started the program back in 78, so I'm, I'm, I've been in the middle of education for a long, long time. Um, what do you think Head Start is doing wrong that other pre-K and, and early education programs that do produce positive outcomes are doing right? So that's a really complicated question. Um, I think one of the big problems with Head Start is that they're not, you know, really required to show results. The way that, you know, if you're a parent who, you know, has the wherewithal to pay to put your kids into a private program, you're going to demand results because you know that you're directly spending that money on on your program. And also, frankly, a lot of this comes back to to the households too. I mean, it's very unfortunate, but you know, a lot of kids go to Head Start because they come from families with limited means, as opposed to the types of kids that end up in private programs. So there's a little bit of a selection bias issue as well when you talk about private programs versus government programs. Right. So you're suggesting that Head Start has become a glorified babysitting service? I think it's probably safe to say that in most cases Head Start That's is a glorified babysitting service. I've seen statistics that Head Start actually produces positive results. On, on I'm not opposed to finding a way that we can do it and you know demand results oriented spending that provides kids with the opportunity they deserve. I just don't think Head Start has been successful at getting us there. But I think we should be experimental and you know give states competitive grants and allow them to experiment with what works in their state and maybe we would get better results for kids that need it. In France, there is universal childhood education uh, access, as it were. In Germany, it's about 50 percent. In most of the Scandinavian countries, it's universal. Their results seem to be very positive. Um, on the other hand, these are countries where the percentage of GDP that's rep represented by government spending runs from 35 to 50 percent which is not us, we're under 20%. So 
where do we go with this? What, what? So I think the German model is actually very interesting. I don't know as much about their investments in early childhood education, um, but their investments in education overall, the way they have apprenticeship programs and the way that they try to give people both workforce and educational skills has helped them keep people in the labor force as opposed to a country like France, where frankly they can have all their early childhood investment in the world, their labor force is dropping out. Well, to a large extent, that's because Germany has decided that they're going to be a manufacturing country and they've created trade, you know, barrier, significant tra barriers to trade, the principal one being a VAT tax that functions as a 17.5% tariff. Um, we're, we're doing nothing like that here anymore and haven't since NAFTA, CAFTA, you know, the Clinton administration. Sure. I think we should think a lot more carefully about the way we provide workforce readiness programs. I think we should think about providing, you know, more manufacturing at a younger level. I think we should provide a lot of, I mean, the president himself actually has funded um, through part of his, you know, focus on community college, has focused on helping community colleges work with local industries and local job boards to design curricula that gets people in the jobs that that community needs today. Those are the types of things I think we should focus on. A little bit of outside early childhood education. Larry, great to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for dropping by. Sure.